in 68, my father was called to the door and shot down like a darn mad dog by a bunch of, of well, uh, by a bunch of Missouri men that had been on the other side of the fence in the war. And there were six of them that killed him. There were six men killed him. But after the death of my father, there was a man there by the name of Moses Beeman, a friend of father. He came over there and he put his hand on top of my head and he says, May an old man's curse rests on you the longest day you live if you don't find and shoot the man that murdered your father. Well, I was just a kid of a boy and I thought I had it to do. And he came over with a pair of old dragoon cap and ball pistols and learnt me how to use them. Now we know obviously the, the history that um, they're, they're trying to keep the same number of pro-slave uh, and, and abolitionist senators in, in uh, the U.S. Senate, so which is one reason you get states that would be admitted uh, as a pro-slave state as long as there was another uh, abolitionist state or free state in at the same time to keep the numbers in, in the Senate equal. Um, <clears throat> Kansas, what makes it unique in part is because of Missouri and where it's located at. If Kansas becomes a, uh, a free state, then Missouri is surrounded on three sides by free states. Uh, and as a, as a slaveholding state, um, you know, there's all sorts of room for, for runaway slaves to get away to uh, as well. And you know, when Kansas, again, as they were looking towards statehood, one of the things that they went through uh, was different groups uh, across the country from both slaveholding states and, and free states trying to influence the vote. So you're gonna get folks like Frank Eaton's father potentially coming from uh, where he came from as a, uh, as a free stater taking money to move to uh, to Kansas to uh, then vote for statehood on a free state platform or on a uh, or the folks that would come and vote for it on a um, slave holding platform. Because of the revenge issue that Quantrell's Raiders went and dealt with, the response from um, uh, the Union, if you will, from Kansas once they become a state, right, is to um, go after anybody and everybody that is a Confederate guerrilla. Uh, in fact, the, the Union general at the time, um, he says he believes that they should um, ha operate with an extermination policy uh, towards the guerrillas and not just, you know, killing all these guys that are Confederate guerrillas, but he wants to move their, their supply chain away from them. That and the extermination um, policy led to a lot of animosity that actually extends past 1865 uh, into the post-war years. So you have these families and individuals that are very upset about one group having uh, forced their, their mother to move or having killed their father or their brother. Uh, and that animosity just hung around for several years afterwards.